Hello class, this is chapter 3 video and in this chapter 3 we are going to learn income statement and statement of financial position so what you can learn from this chapter upon the completion of this chapter you should be able to understand the element in the income statement and statement of financial position you can understand the process of transferring the information from trial balance to income statement and statement of financial position and lastly, you are able to prepare a basic statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position for sole trader. So let's start. What is income statement? So income statement, we also refer as profit or loss or statement of comprehensive income that present the financial result. What result we want to know? We want to know that either the company is making profit or making loss so this is the result of the company whether profit or loss user can understand the financial performance of an entity through the use of income statement so profit or loss in general financial period of an entity are 12 months so the period cover for income statement normally 12 months so what is statement of financial position statement of financial position also known as balance sheet presents the financial net worth of an entity including the asset liabilities equities at the end of the financial period so here we have one accounting equation to learn which is asset equals to liability plus equity this one i will explain in detail again to you later when we discuss the statement of financial position so let's take a look on income statement so this is the sample of income statement so the format of income statement we start from revenue which is also considered as your sales and then you less the return from your customer when customer return products to us we use the word return inwards or sales return and this is a positive amount this is a negative so you get this amount this is your net revenue or net sales after you get your sales figure the next section is your cost of goods sold cost of goods sold we start from the opening inventories opening inventories are the inventory that you brought forward from the previous financial year and then you add purchase carriage inwards and custom duty so here we consider as cost to bring in the stock or inventories for example if the product or the goods are from overseas you need to shift to your warehouse right you need to pay carriage inward which is the transport transport fee to bring in the product and if the item are from overseas you have to pay custom duty which we call import tax in order to get the goods goes to your warehouse or goes to your country so this we consider as cost to bring in the inventory and after that we will less return hours or purchase return return hours are the product that you returns to your supplier maybe due to expiry or due to poor quality and then you will also minus the closing inventory in order to get the cost of goods sold and your revenue minus your cost of goods sold you will get gross profit so the first section here we have another name called what trading we have another name called trading account so the next section I'm going to explain to you the structure in cost of goods why in the structure of cost of goods sold we have to use opening inventory we have to use opening inventory at the purchase and minus the closing stock so we can use a diagram to explain this let's say at the beginning of the year you have three box of product for example
and during the year you purchase for example 10 boxes of the goods and at the end of the year you still have two box of the product you still have two box of the product so my question how many product you sold let me explain the example for you again at the beginning of the year you have three boxes of the product and during the year you know that you have purchased 10 boxes from your supplier and at the end of the year when you check your warehouse you found that you still have two boxes of the inventory so my question is how many product you sold during the year think about it how many product you sold during the year so in order to get the quantity that you sold during the year we can use this formula this is three right the quantity that you have at the beginning of the year and you purchase 10 units of the year right so it means that total inventory you have in the year is 13 but you still left another two boxes of the product in your warehouse it means that the total cell is 11 3 plus 10 minus 2 is 11 this is the quantity so am I right this is the quantity so so we link we link this concept back to the cost of good so concept is this same as the concept that we discussed we use the opening inventory we add the purchase we have and we minus the closing inventory so this is the concept that we apply when we calculate the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold refer to the the amount the cost of your product that you sold to your customer so this quantity this the this, the quantity in your cost of goods sold must same as what revenue quantity it means how many product that you sold to your customer during the year i repeat cost of goods sold formula we use opening inventory at the purchase and minus the closing inventory and of course when we have cost to bring in the product we record at the app section here and when we return to our supplier we also include here all right hope that this explanation is good for you to understand the concept in your course of goods so opening beginning of the year at purchase during the year minus the balance of the stock at the year so you get how many quantity you sold so this is the concept we use in cost of goods so next you use a uh, net revenue minus cost of goods so you get your gross profit gross profit is the profit that you from the sale of the product but we know for a business we only we, we don't have we're not only having the cost of selling the product we also have some expenses to maintain the business operation so the next section of the income statement we will indicate income and expenses so what are the example of income that the company have the company have may have bank interest income uh, commission income discount receive or the company may have additional spaces that rent out for other you may have rental income next expenses expenses discuss the cost or the fee that you pay to op maintain the operation so carriage outwards here so eh, you may ask a question so why carriage outwards we include in expenses but carriage inwards we include in cost of goods sold. so the explanation is this so we have two transaction which is very similar cost of sorry 
we have carriage inwards this is carriage outwards so what's the difference between carriage inwards and outwards so carriage inwards refer to the transport cost to bring in inventory and carriage outwards this is the transport cost to send the product to who to customer carriage inwards is related to the cost to bring in the product so this is recognized in cost of goods sold for carriage outwards this is cost for sending the product to customer so this is expenses because this expenses is used to maintain the operation of business sending the product to customer so this is classified as expenses so this is classified under cost of goods sold so hope you can distinguish by this next discount a lot discount a lot is the discount that you give to your customer um, here I want to emphasize uh, Based on my understanding, in your secondary school, you may include your discount allowed in your cost of goods sold. You may include your discount receive. Sorry, you may include your discount allowed to your revenue, because this is the dis discount that you give to your customer. You may include discount receive in your cost of goods sold, because this is the discount uh, given by your supplier. But in the diploma level, I wish that you can put these two in your income and expenses. Don't put under your revenue and cost of goods sold. Follow my practice because my uh, format is in line with your UOL degree. So I suggest you follow this. Next, we have printing and stationery. This is the cost of your printing and buying the stationery in the company. Bank charges is the amount that bank charge you for your transaction. Salary, this is the fee that you pay for your employee or workers. Rental expenses when you rent a place you need to pay to your landlord upkeep and maintenance for example you have machine you have motor vehicles you have some wear and tear you need to pay the uh, fee to maintain or upkeep it cleaning expenses for example you ask person to clean your office and some detergent expenses and interest in borrowing let's say you borrow money from bank bank charge you interest so this is your interest so when you have your gross profit you add your income and minus the expenses the total if you get a positive amount this is your net profit and you get a negative amount this is your loss net loss so this is income statement next next we would like to discuss the statement of financial position and statement of financial position we have three sections the first section is asset second section is liability and third section is what equity so we have three sections let's discuss one by one so in asset we have two types of asset one is current one is non-current so how you distinguish current and current if you can use the asset more than 12 months you classify under non-current asset but if you will use the item within 12 months or within a year we classify as current asset so let's see what are the items that we have in our non-current asset we have premises premises considered as building office equipment like your table the chair uh, cabinet in the office and motor for heat goals and other example like brand and machinery 
those things in your office is helping you to generate profit and they are likely to use more than a year so those items we consider as non-current asset next current asset current asset are the things that you are likely to use within a year the first one inventory the inventory here remember this is closing inventory the stock that you have at the end of the year and for inventory we have quite many uh, terms to use so inventories is more technical we use in accounting another term we can use is goods or we can say stock or refer to the same thing which is your inventory the goods that you have all right inventory have different terms to use inventory is goods or stock right all refer to the same thing next threat receivables threat receivable is the amount that you can collect from your customer why you can collect from a customer because your customer are not paying you money when they purchase the goods next other current asset this can be a uh, prepayment uh, this i will share with you in the future lesson and cash and bank balance is the money that you have either in cash or in the bank format so we add the total of current as non-current asset and current asset we can get total asset this is the first section we start from asset next the next section will be liabilities and equities for liabilities we start from current liabilities current liabilities is the liability that you will pay within 12 months for non-current liability these are the liabilities these are the liabilities that you will pay you will pay more than 12 months example of current liability for example trap payables what is trap payables this is the amount that you owing to your supplier because you purchase goods from them without immediate payment so this is trap payables other current lively such as such as accrual i will share it with this with you in future and bank overdraft so what is bank overdraft bank overdraft means that you borrow short-term money from bank you borrow short-term money from bank for your operation purpose so we call this as bank overdraft next non-current liability example of non-current liability is term loan normally term loan refer to a big amount that you borrow from bank and you need to take more than a year to make the repayment so since the liability you are going to pay off more than a year so we classify as non-current liability and you use your current liability plus non-current liability you can get your total liability next the next section is talking about equity so the first item in your equity is your share capital share capital refer to the amount that invest by the owner to the company next return earnings brought forward return earnings brought forward means that the unappropriated unshare profit from the previous earning example let's say you have a business year one two three four and this is oh, we assume that the company is making profit and this is the amount that the the owner withdraw let's say profit 100 drawing is 50 and same to every year So the net movement will be 50 for every year. It means that after your profit minus your drawing, but the total return earning, return means left, the balance. Return earnings will be 20, 200, sorry, will be 200. It means that this is the amount that still remain in the company because owner did not fully withdraw all the profit of the company so we call return earning so the first one in your equity we have return earning brought down 
we add the net profit of the year how you get the net profit we refer to the income statement if this is a loss please put negative because loss will reduce the company return earning next we less drawing drawing refer to the amount that withdraw by the partner of the company sorry the owner of the company and we will get balance uh, returns earning carried out so this is the remaining balances so share capital at return earning carried out you get your total equities and your total liability plus total equity you can get liabilities and equity and this amount and this amount must be what equal so let's discount let, let's discuss about the accounting equation here accounting equation asset equals to your liability plus equity so let's discuss this so in accounting we have an accounting equation the asset of the company equals to the liability plus equity so we know mathematics we can change the direction of the item in your formula right so we can say that equity equals to asset minus liability so let's further explain the equation here we know equity refer to the money belongs to owner asset is the money belongs to the company and this liability is the money to be paid so equity for a company if you use all the money in the company pay off all the liabilities in the company it means what the remaining balances will become equity which is the money belongs to owner so another name for equity is what equity also refer to net worth of the company it means that when a company use asset to pay all the liability when the company use their all asset to pay the liability it means this is the net worth the remaining balances the remaining value of the entity so it's called equity so this is the explanation of accounting equation so the last section here is how we identify current and non-current in SOFP, the statement of financial position. So current refer to asset or liability that will be used or collected, converted or paid within the next 12 months. Keyword is within the next 12 months. So example of current asset, inventory, receivables, prepayment, cash in hand, cash in bank, example of current liability track payables accrual bank of rough and non-current refer that the amount to be paid to be converted or to be used after the next 12 months example property plant and equipment long-term borrowing debenture loan stock those are the things that consider as non-current so that's all for part one video and if you have any question you can leave your comment in the youtube or ask me in the lms or by email so that's all for part one video thanks for watching see you later